Let's talk a moment about people getting manipulated into how they think and perceive things. The color used to denote Americanism has always been blue. The color of Marxism, communism, has always been red. Red flags, red banners, etc. A few years ago, the media branded the areas that were mostly Republican as red. They branded the Democrat majority areas as blue, completely overturning the idea of the use of these colors to denote a political philosophy. And the Republicans went along with it without a murmur. In other words, the colors that depict the major philosophies in politics were reversed in the process and planted the idea in the minds of the people that red is conservative, at least with some people. Frankly, based on the actions or inaction of the Republican leadership, I believe the Republican Party needs a new color. Now, some may take umbrage with this opinion, but let me tell you of a few things that many Republican activists know about, especially those who have run for office and seen the actions of the Republican Party relative to their candidacies. First, the Republican national leadership has never done anything about voter fraud in my lifetime. There were, where were they, for instance, in the 2020 election? The history of voter fraud has always been against outsiders and staunch conservatives. The National Republican Party does not like conservatives. They never have. To get a better understanding of the Republican leadership, get my book, To the Victor Go the Myths and Monuments, and read Chapter 11, The Origins of the Republican Party. It will really open your eyes. Second, the Republican leadership, and I emphasize the leadership, always talk a good fight, but they rarely actually fight. They're foot-draggers, designed to placate their supporters with conservative rhetoric, but never effective action in support of the Constitution or less government. My experience with most Republicans elected to Congress is where they do very little and are generally afraid to make waves if it will cost them votes or, more importantly, cost them the support of their donors. They say they need to be reelected to be effective, yet do very little to address or follow up on solutions to the real problems in the process. So they really are not effective. So why re-elect them? Now, there are a few Republican politicians here and there who are good, real conservatives. However, when you see such people as the Romneys calling themselves Republicans, then something is wrong with the Republican Party. Do not forget that Mitt Romney received the Republican nomination in 2012 by the Republicans assembled, sent there by their respective states. And don't forget they nominated the two Bushes and John McCain, all globalists and liberals promoting the new world order. The nomination of Mitt Romney was after he served as the model for Obamacare when he was governor of Massachusetts with his Romney care. Mitt's father, George Romney, governor of Michigan, was so liberal, and I use the word loosely, he actually helped raise money among businessmen for Saul Alinsky. Now, for those of you who do not know who Saul Alinsky was, he was the architect of community action programs to build Marxism from the bottom up. He wrote a book titled Rules for Radicals, which he dedicated to Lucifer. This can't be true, you say. If you don't believe me, get a copy of his book and look for yourself. This was the man George Romney was raising money for. If the information hasn't been purged from the Internet, you can prove this for yourself. Mitt Romney's niece is the head of the National Committee of the Republican Party. She sounds good on TV, but real constitutionalists running for office never receive help from the Republican National Committee. I've talked to too many conservative candidates who were scuttled by the Republican leadership in Arizona, Washington, Idaho, South Carolina, Texas, California, and many other states. And where was the Republican Party when the fraud of 2020 was obvious? While the John Birch Society doesn't endorse candidates or political parties, let us not forget that too many people in the Republican leadership are just as happy to destroy Trump as Schumer and Pelosi. Is it time for a new party? Who knows? But I can tell you that any political movement will be infiltrated by the other side from the day they are formed. The conspiracy that means to rule us cannot allow a truly Americanist party to exist without being neutralized from within. The solution rests with the voters. 
The more informed a citizen is, the better they vote. Also, the more informed the citizen is, the better will be the political parties on the scene because they will not be able to fool the people all of the time. This then is the solution, informing the electorate. Some people question why we always try to get people to join the John Birch Society and buy our books, videos, pamphlets, etc. It's not to make money. It's to build a force capable of getting the word out, going around the media and social media to reach sufficient numbers in our communities. No one around here makes a lot of money working to save our republic. They are very dedicated to the cause. If I may, let me use myself as an example. I do not take a penny from the John Birch Society except airline tickets when I'm needed somewhere to work for the society. Even when I was CEO, I worked for free. I make no money for the books I write or royalties from them. I'm happy to do it. I'm a volunteer, full time. And I do it out of a sense of duty to my country, our liberty, and our independence. And because I know that the John Birch Society is the best chance we have of saving the country. Our chief of operations likewise works without any remuneration and takes enormous amounts of time away from his home and family to do so. We are not alone in this. We have many, many people who have sacrificed their careers working as members and staff of the society. We sometimes get criticism about us saying the same things over and over again over the past six years while nothing has changed. Well, there are two things regarding that. For one, most do not realize that campaigns we've initiated have slowed down the progress of Marxism for decades. We have thrown a monkey wrench into the agenda timetable of these totalitarians. Without the John Birch Society, we would have already lost our freedom years ago. And this is the reason the elitists still smear us. Secondly, we've never been big enough to actually defeat these people outright. We need to be much bigger than we are. And we will continue to emphasize our need for membership growth until we are big enough. And by the way, it's not simply numbers. Patriots have to be organized in their communities to work together. We want people of good character, have a sense of responsibility to save our country, and will work with others to do so. Our slogan, less government, more responsibility, and with God's help, a better world, is important. We want less government intrusion into our lives, and we need God's help. However, People need to be responsible and assume their responsibility to save our country. Will God help those who sit on their hands or those who are working to save our country? It is time to stop being an information junkie and get to work. Join with us.